let me introduce you to the idealist. But more importantly, I want to talk about their weapon of choice, a gun. This character was made canon earlier this year, and the weapon they're wielding is the first of its kind we've seen in the Avatar world. But this kid randomly having a handgun is kind of weird, right? Like if firearms have always existed in Avatar, which is now confirmed to be true, then why haven't the other characters ever used them before? People can breathe fire in this universe, yet they had my man Sokka out there fighting with the boomerang. And although he's skilled, I'm sure he would have appreciated having a new toy to level the playing field. What if I told you this recent addition of a gun into Avatar's lore wasn't a retcon or a mistake, but is instead a logical step in terms of world building? In fact, I'll convince you that it actually makes a ton of sense. Today, I've got a bit of a history lesson for you, covering both Avatar and the real world. Specifically, you'll learn about the phenomenon of how isolated cultures invented these same things, but for very different reasons and at different times. Did you know that the ancient Roman Empire invented the steam engine nearly 2,000 years before the Industrial Revolution? Now, I know that directly contradicts what we all learned in middle school history, that the innovative use of steam power in the 1700s was what sparked the industrial blaze across Europe. And that's still true, our teachers weren't lying this time. A steam powered machine was invented in England around 1712, but one was also invented in China during the Song Dynasty of the 11th century. And now you see where I'm going with this, because a steam engine was also also invented in the Roman Empire controlled Egypt during the first century of the Common Era. But the question is, why did the hero of Alexandria's steam machine from 2000 years ago never catch on while James Watt's engine from 200 years ago changed the trajectory of the entire human race? And what does any of this have to do with guns being an avatar? A lot, actually, because we can use this tidbit from real history to understand why firearm technology never caught on within the Four Nations. The Idealist is a new playbook character introduced in Avatar Legends the role-playing game. The tabletop RPG, which came out earlier this year, included a bunch of these character archetypes to help inspire players with the creation of their very own heroes. But even though the playbook characters are basically just templates, they're still canon avatar characters, each with their own unique personalities and histories. Some are cooler than others, like this earthbender who replaced their hand with one made out of rocks. The swampbender, sandbender, and sun warrior characters also look pretty badass, but the idealist is still the most intriguing only because of their weapon. This is what's known as a hand cannon. And yes, that is a type of handheld firearm otherwise called a gun. Here's how it works. You take a hollow tube, usually a bamboo shoot in the ancient days, fill it with gunpowder, set it on fire, and then wait for it to explode. The hollow tube forms a pressurized chamber during the explosion, and if you're pointing it towards an enemy army, then someone's about to have a very bad day. I wish me luck. To shoot someone farther away, you'd need more gunpowder to create a bigger explosion. This created a problem. Since the bamboo barrels couldn't withstand the increased pressure, they would just explode. So that's cool because you've now created the first ever pipe bomb, but then less cool because your shooters would all be exploded. Lucky for you though, there's an easy fix. Just replace the bamboo with stronger metal and you're good to go. In the real world, these firearm innovations all took place in China, once again during the Song Dynasty around the year 1259. And over the next century, the Mongolian Empire would spread the weapons to Europe as they attempted but failed to conquer the continent. In the Avatar universe, we know that it was the Fire Nation who developed this technology. Not only was their bending convenient for, you know, lighting the gunpowder, but their mastery over fire gave them huge advantages in terms of metalwork quality and versatility. The Avatar Legends RPG tells us that bronze single shot hand cannons were in use by the Fire Nation during the era of Kyoshi. Since Kyoshi lived for over 200 years, this is not the most helpful when trying to pinpoint an exact date. Fortunately, we know that some events outlined in the RPG take place when Kyoshi was 19 years old, so we're just gonna use that timeline for everything. Meaning that guns were commonplace in the world of Avatar in 293 BG, aka before genocide, aka roughly 400 years before the events of the show. Hope that was clear for everyone, I told you this would be a deep dive. But we still haven't addressed the main question, how come people were running around with guns half a millennia ago during Kyoshi's era, yet no one in Aang's time, or even Korra's time for that matter, were packing similar heat? Republic City and the Legend of Korra look straight out of the 1920s. They've got electricity and radio and movies and a giant fucking mech suit and you know, other modern inventions like that. But they have no guns. How did they come across a spirit-powered nuclear bomb, but not a revolver? Even in Aang's era, they had fireworks, alongside grenades and militarized shell bombs, 
Philippines. So it is apparent that gunpowder was still widely used. Why were the Fire Nation soldiers still using swords and spears rather than miniguns and rifles? It just doesn't seem to make any sense. So I understand why people boiled it down to bad writing, but trust me, there is a good reason. And by looking again at real history, we can figure out exactly what's going on here. Remember when I mentioned how ancient Romans invented the first steam engine a couple of thousand years before that same idea changed the world forever? Well, I never got around to explaining why it was that their machine hit a dead end and led nowhere. So let me fix that real quick and tell you the answer. The reason that humanity didn't industrialize decades before anyone had even heard the name Jesus Christ is because, well, the Roman steam engine just kinda sucked. And once the Romans realized it sucked, they threw their invention in the garbage and never thought about it again. Let me explain. Technological advancements do not occur on a linear, predetermined path. It's not like a video game where you upgrade from sticks and stones to arrows and guns and then to space lasers. Alright, so in the real world, innovation only occurs when there is a problem to solve. What do I mean by this? Think back to the evolution of the hand cannon. At first, it was made out of bamboo and it worked pretty well. Everyone was happy. Or, you know, not happy, but they were all killing each other really effectively and anyway the point is that they eventually encountered a problem. Remember? They wanted to shoot from farther away but adding more gunpowder turned their guns into pipe bombs. But they were humans and no obstacle can thwart a human's quest to figure out how to best kill other humans. So they went back to the drawing board and decided to replace the weak bamboo with strong metal. Thus the issue was resolved and innovation had occurred. The main problem with the Roman steam engine was that there wasn't really a problem for it to solve. The Roman Empire had slaves. Lots of them, as much as one for every two citizens according to modern estimates. For them, pulling out a whip and tossing around a few bodies was way more practical than spending the time, energy, and money necessary to figure out this whole steam thing. Were they right on the cusp of achieving the world's greatest innovation? Maybe. With the advantage of hindsight, it certainly looks like, yeah, they might have been. But from their point of view, which is what actually matters, all they could see was this weird, ugly looking, useless ball that was way less efficient than a handful of slaves. Contrary to that, James Watt's steam engine in 1776 was specifically designed to fix a problem facing the British Empire, coal mining. At the time, the British economy was already growing rapidly, with factories pumping out raw materials like iron on a scale previously unimaginable. The factories needed a ton of coal to smelt the ores, but coal mines were prone to flooding, a big problem because slowing down the coal output meant slowing down the factories, which meant slowing down the entire British economy. The Watt steam engine fixed this problem. Its first use was pumping water out of these flooded mines. And as a cherry on top, the engines were also powered by the very same coal they helped mine. So as the use of the engines sped up the economy, they were at the same time creating an unlimited supply of their own power source. This created a self-sustaining cycle of coal that powers engines, that finds coal, that powers engines, etc, etc, etc. As you can imagine, Imagine this cycle was extremely efficient, and we are still trapped in it today. Now that we have all of the historical context, we can finally answer why guns existed in Avatar, but no one bothered to use them. It is because, drum roll please, they sucked at least when compared to bending. We see in both Avatar and Core that the main weapon used by the Fire Nation is firebending. Big shocker, I know, but it tells us pretty plainly that firebending was just a better weapon than hand cannons ever were. And if you think about it, that makes perfect sense. With firebending, you never have to worry about reloading. You can create bigger fireballs and do more damage than you could with the bullet. And you don't even have to worry about like dropping your weapon or something. Oh, and there goes the hand cannon. Even the other types of bending are vastly superior, i.e. more deadly than hand cannons. We see in the show that if an earthbender comes across a bucket of gravel, they could probably take out a small army. But I know not everyone is a bender, and if you personally had a choice between a sword and a hand cannon, you might reach for the gun, but are you sure about that? Would you really want to be out on the battlefield lugging around a bag full of explosive gunpowder, knowing one of your homies might lose his temper for one second and make it all go boom? Doesn't sound as appealing anymore, right? And once again, real life reflects this because another Another fun fact, the American army was still widely using swords up until 1918. That overlaps with World War I by the way. So what caused America to finally give up sword war in the early 1900s you ask? The invention of the self-powered machine gun, which was first used, you guessed it, during World War I. This brings us back for the final time to Avatar. In the modern day, when we hear gun, we think of this.
Rarely do we think about firearms in the form they existed in for hundreds of years. Clearly, if Fire Lords Ozai or Sozin knew that this was on the horizon, they would have taken this more seriously. But innovation is not linear, and just like the Roman Empire with their prototype steam engine, the Fire Nation lacked a problem to solve. The Romans had slaves, and the firebenders were already the goats at war. One final thing, because the Legend of Cori did depict a certain type of firearm that included a barrel, gunpowder, and even a trigger. And I'm not talking about the giant laser. No, instead take a closer look at the net shooting contraptions used by the sky bison poachers. They seem a lot like guns, but don't worry, these don't debunk my entire video. Yes, they are a type of handheld firearm, but they were not intended for war. Rather, they too were designed to solve a problem. How do you catch an animal without hurting it? Pretty obvious, right? You throw a net. But what do you do if that animal can fly, is fast, and it can airbend? Well, then you just add some gunpowder and shoot the net from a distance. And then you pray, because you may have just also invented the first ever pipe bomb. Anyone else wonder what future civilizations are mocking us in the 21st century for just barely missing out on? Maybe if we had let Shyamalan finish his sequel for the last Airbender movie, we would have, I don't know, like, cured cancer or something. Hmm, yeah, no, still not worth it.